Welcome to New Wu Session, where we invite guests from different corners of the Vegas cannabis industry, and we sit down to share a VIP table package in Nevada's very first cannabis consumption lounge, only here in the Vegas Tasting Room. Come check us out. Happy holidays to you and yours from the New Wu fam. On today's episode, we have the legendary Kanax himself, Jason Harris from Jerome Baker Design. Pull up and see what makes him one of the top glassmakers in the game for the past decade. Gee. On today's episode, we have a very special guest, Jerome Baker Designs, and their very own Jason Harris. Jason, I appreciate you coming on to New Recession, man. It's a big blessing, and we obviously got your pieces here featuring in the tasting room. Um, we definitely want to dive deep into, uh, into your background and everything, especially you already know our, right our island connection. But before we do so, we want to feature uh, some of the goodies that we do have here in the Vegas tasting room. Eli, if you don't mind bringing out. How you guys doing? Easy. Oh, this today. looks great. <laughs> Y'all enjoy. Got some cannellini in there as well. Yes, sir. Cheers, yes, bro. Cheers, brother. Yes, sir. Nice to be hanging out over here. Today. Likewise, I appreciate it. Shout out to you know what it is for the Lihi Moy as well. Oh, yeah. and we have your Nazi flower package. That is we incredible. We have three options of flour here. We have the garlic skittles, a uh, hazmat from Fino Exotic, and we also have a diamond dust from Virtu. And then we have a lot of pre rolls for you guys to choose from. Y'all enjoy if you need me, let me know. Okay. Right on, thank, thank you, you, brother. I appreciate, I appreciate you. You, uh, you want to dive in, brother? Anything? Any... Let's Please check it out over as here, much as man. you can, brother. Looks pretty frosty. You know? Garlic we got some good Skittles. Sativas. Yes, sir. By, uh, tell me about that. NLVO, yeah. Garlic Skittles, probably one of my better favorites. Has a nice body set to it, but very high in limony. Big fan. I'm going to pop up in one of these. Let's go. I'm going to use one of these killer little heads. trays you, you guys know? provide here. <laughs> yes, sir. What a service at New Wu. <laughs> you know, for me, it was coming here for my first time at the tasting room. It was a real Vegas experience. 1,000%. Um, you know, uh, women bringing uh, the, the, the chronic to the table, helping you pack your, your weed, keeping the bowls clean. Uh, it was all real, real nice and, and real cool to experience here in America. Hell yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, we used to just go to Amsterdam. That was the, the main play. You could go fly over there, you land at the Varmerstraat, you go check out all the coffee shops, you figure Hell out where yeah. breakfast is, you figure out where dinner is. You're right. <laughs> next Red light day. district. So it was a lot of fun. 1,000%, man. Right I on, appreciate I'm going to do a little bong hit of this. So my, these bongs that I make, uh, they're just for a little snapper hit. That's how I recommend you smoke the bong. It's got a pool bowl on it. Uh, this is different than the majority of the new American market. It's how it has glass on glass. Nice. That stuff gets stuck, I believe. And, and my brand represents that kind of old school chug -a lug vibe with the bongs. Even the smaller pieces that we make have that kind of Harley Davidson feel to them, uh, unlike a lot of the other stuff that's out there. So I wanted to stick true to my, my OG style and sure. always just make my own sleeves and slides. Uh, I based it off of what I learned, the old man Bob Snodgrass back in 1990. Uh, just what he did is kind of the lead I followed. And Amazing. so we're really stoked that New Wu has these kind of pieces here to offer to the public. I think it's a, um, it's a piece that you can get a real clean taste. You can find the, 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 the terpenes in the cannabis real yes, easily, sir. and you can keep the thing clean and, and find that all the time. Uh, it's just a real nice way to smoke. Super stoked and blessed to have them here in the tasting room. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I mean, you kind of already kind of jumped into it. Let's, uh, let's dive a little further into your background. How did you get your start into glass making? It's a pretty special industry to jump into, you know? Right on. Well, how I got my start in the glass making was that right there. Right. Taking a hit of chronic weed out of a piece of glass. Right. Yeah, before that, there was nothing like it in my, in my, in my world. Sure. And it was a, a kind of the best of both, uh, or a, a, I would call it a, a perfect storm. Right. And what it was, was uh, there was the first kind of chronic cannabis that I and a lot of other people in my age group discovered. I was a freshman in college. Weed was coming out of Vermont. I was on the East Coast okay. and it was some Northern Lights. Ooh, and we used to get that oh, shit gee. and it tasted so good. We couldn't waste it in those wooden bowls or, sure. or, or antler bowls and shit like that. So we had glass pipes. Most of the time they were for crack smoking. But we'd get them and we'd pack chronic weed in there and I could taste it. 
And then one day a guy came by on Grateful Dead tour and he was called Bob Snodgrass, like I mentioned earlier, and he was right. the first guy that I'd smoked his pipe. And when I did, it changed my, my dimension. Uh, not only did the pipe appear to change color the more I smoked it, it is a For magic sure. he incorporates into it, but the weed tasted good out of it. Right. Well, and so exciting. after I met him, I wanted to learn that craft and, and was blessed and honored to be able to learn from him out in Eugene, Oregon. Man, that's amazing, bro. Um, I mean, you've been, you've been, um, you've been around the block for a very long time, obviously. Um, can you explain further? or uh, further explain to me and for our guests at home, what was Operation Pipe Dream? And what was your best owner story with uh, Tommy Chong? <laughs> there you go. So, uh, you know, I, I told you I started in about 1991 with the real glass and uh, rocking and rolling in Eugene, Oregon. And- um, 30 years strong. Yeah, 30 years strong. Yeah. And uh, by 1999, we were doing 4 million a year in sales. I had 70 employees, a big crew of people. And uh, it was something else. It was like a Willy Wonka bong factory in For Eugene. Sure. And people sure. from all over would come visit us. In uh, 2003, I was arrested in what they called Operation Pipe Dreams. Uh, it, was, it was for manufacturing drug paraphernalia. So I, uh, they came, wow. knocked my door down. I was in the, the little jail cell in the, in, the, in the Eugene County Jail, and I'm watching John Ashcroft on TV from the White House explain that he had arrested all the biggest names in paraphernalia. At the time that I recognized uh, uh, that it was a really big bust, uh, that I had to kind of, kind of, my life was going to change. Uh, after I got out of all my trouble and, and, and went back to work, they told me I was never allowed to make bongs again. Uh, it's against the federal laws, which is, you know, kind of where we are in cannabis today. Mm -hmm. We're working on full legalization. Right. Um, I've heard predictions of by 2025, we should have a national legalization play on the table. Um, but until then, we kind of have to navigate this path that we're set in. For sure. So, when, so I stayed in Maui. Hawaii for yes, all those sir. many years. We make uh, turtles Kanakas. and whales and dolphins and these kind of things for tourists out of the glass. And when legalization happened here in Vegas, uh, we moved here, uh, this is about four years ago. We got a building right down the street from New Wu. And this was kind of our first big play here in cannabis. Uh, we got to come be with you guys uh, from the day we came to town. Uh, and you guys have been huge supporters of us from, uh, from the noise we're making to the plays here in Vegas. And uh, we've been more than honored about it all. So, you know, it's been a lot of fun in this time of legalization on a state level. I have a, a permit in my building to manufacture drug paraphernalia uh, from the city of Las Vegas. Um, and so that's just something that we, we take pride in right now is being able to, to navigate and be legal, uh, work within the, 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 the compass that's given to us in this, in this wild time that we live in that as a kid I never thought we'd be in is, 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 is transitioning to national legalization. A thousand percent crazy, man. You're a true pioneer of this cannabis industry. But, uh, cool, man. Yeah, cool. it's wild, man. Cool. Um, so actually, um, I want to kind of steal one of the questions I had up ahead because you were talking about this era. Um, there was an interview that you did have before where you said that during that time period, I believe that was like six or, six or seven years ago, um, you said that during that era, you were going, we were going through what you called reefer madness meets Jerome Baker. Do you still think that, especially during this time that we are now, how weed is now starting to give more of a Jordan brand effect through like cookies and all these other brands, do you still think we're in reefer madness era or do you see us blossoming into a new era that we're stepping into? You know, when, when <clears throat> to be honest, you know, it's a great colorful exchange of thoughts and ideas that's sure. going on right now, for sure. which only cannabis could have done for us all. Right. Um, I believe in my heart that national legalization will promote global legalization that in the end, if we can get Pakistan and Israel and you can yes. have Russia, yes. imagine the day Russia legalizes cannabis, what kind of change and shift that's going to give us in the overall long-term health and, of humanity. Yeah. Okay, so I believe that in my heart, but in the, in, the, in the localized, what's going on and how we are discovering legalization right now, I have to sometimes goff at some of the, um, the cannabis influencers, uh, uh, so-called cannabis experts and people that are doing this thing, the so-called packaging experts that go around the, the, the crazy non-biodegradable uh, packaging that we have, like who, why? 
We don't need that. We, we need to think more globally and act locally and try to um, try to get this space and, and, you know, push it into the hole that it needs to go into, which is we should be about recyclability and, and, and sustainability within our industry. And this is right. not the it yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so I want to help you know, help navigate that. And that's going to be through noise and, and, and making something that brings light on those subjects. In Maui, where I live half the time, we've outlawed plastic bags, we've right. outlawed yes, straws. Yes, um, I just think it's part of bringing awareness to why. Granny's going to say, well, I use a plastic bag all my life. Why did I do that? Oh my God, look at them all, all these huge piles of them that never go away. Yeah, so we can, we can do that in the same way with this. Um, and as well as the space that we live is illegal. Yeah. On a federal level, yes, this sir. is illegal. Yes. Um, promoting it, uh, doing it, all this stuff. And so we need to become aware that these shifts need to happen immediately. Yes. Uh, it yeah. couldn't, you know, in my mind, it shouldn't be 2025 before it's, it's shifted. Why is it not shifting? Yeah, no, if the majority of the public wants it one way, why has it not shifted yet? So we need to ask these questions and there's got to be some big ball dude that's going to get up there and, and help us make a change. Yeah, you know, all sure. through all this thing, it's been about people being scared or people being hiding out in the closet. Yeah. You know, all these big time growers that you see out there that have been doing it for all these years were in the closet before legalization. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Very hidden, very guerrilla. So there's very few of them, you know, uh, uh, Dennis Perone and those other guys that went out there on a, on a limb for us and, and, and really changed and shifted the laws. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see who yeah, that yeah. is. Right, you know, 1000%. I can only hope the next president is going to be fully about national legalization, uh, harnessing it for what it is. And let's move on down the line. What's next? Yeah. You know, we know what it can bring us is inspiration. Uh, it brings us new things. The creativity behind this uh, is so much more than, uh, you know, if you go to a bar or a consumption lounge, who's yeah. going to come out with more artwork? You know what I mean? Let's let's give it a shot. You know, let's let's bring light to it. Let's let's get it moving. That, that 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 that's my what I see of this whole complex legalization time that we're living in right yes, now. Sir. Yes, sir. You know, sorry about the long answer. No, not at all, man. That Thank was God beautiful. for the great drinks here. Right? <laughs> man, hopefully one of y'all at home watching this heard those very very wise words, man. Um, so we 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 spoke on it a lot. Um, how was your transition from Oregon to Maui? Me, obviously, you already know. Shout out to my Kanaka Maoli out there, but yeah, uh, you know, my people would love, would love to hear your experience, especially with glass making. Glass making is huge in Hawaii, especially with some of these hotels and stuff. I'm Absolutely, sure you know. Absolutely. So, once I was in the process of moving there, I realized that it's not about going out there and trying to make a bunch of money. Right. It was going out there and kind of res paying respect to the aina, yes, which is the yes, everything that we live in. So when I went to Hawaii originally, after being arrested, we went over to the University of Hawaii on Oahu. Right. And we called in a lot of the culture students from the Hawaii community that That's were studying amazing. the culture over there. That's amazing. And we also brought the art students. They just happened to have a glass blowing program there. Wow. So in that program, we brought one of the best artists in, in Hawaii and he speaks Hawaiian and all this, and we had a hula told to us. Nice. And in Beautiful. that hula, we picked a pose and we sculpted that in glass. And so we felt that that gave back to the community in a way that it made the culture students say like, well, whoa, I can express my words in art. And it made the art students say, whoa, there's some subject matter here. I'm on their you know, space. I maybe should pay respect by doing this and learn a little bit of hula learn a little bit of the stories 1, about how we got here. Um, and so it was all really cool. And we parlayed that over into our studio on Maui and we did a lot of that different stuff. I have over 50 videos on YouTube uh, that yeah, kind of have the Hawaiian language, uh, different interpretations yes, and, and different things that we did to pay respect to the Aina. Right. One of them was uh, we had a, there was a shark attack at our surf spot. And oh, so wow. we made a giant hammerhead shark and submerged him in a block of you know, thick glass, and we did it all <laughs> at a party yeah, while That's telling amazing. the story with it. And we would bring bands into the studio and That's play music beautiful. while we made different specific pieces of art. And uh, just had a really good time of it over there. It's transitioned now into a place called Makai Glass. Oh, it's in Haile wow. Miley, Hawaii. Yeah, and uh, nice. the boys up there, uh, Randy and Justin, have an incredible studio that they make gi giant chandeliers and just elaborate, really cool art. And are able to have clientele there on the island that are, are able to afford buying that stuff and support these arts. Sure. Um, that's been the biggest thing. Like Nuwu, having the outlet here to sell. 
having the outlet here to sell and doing this whole thing has been a lot of fun and being able to be supported and people buying it makes us be able to have jobs and create these one-of-a-kind pieces of glass so all together it's just been a great path um, a great way to experience the cannabis plant right. and pay it a respect and kind of be around this tribe that we have of like-minded people 1, um, you know all different cultures all different you know breeds of people can be involved in this one common denominator which is the cannabis plant yes, sir. And, and, and you know for me uh, I, I make pieces that appeal to that whole swath of people for and sure. that's been fun for me is kind of helping push those parameters and find out what people like and you know tur turn the guy onto the mushroom sculpture that would have never been the mushroom guy or you know yeah, what I mean sure. it's, it's a lot of fun when, when people amazing. come in uh, it's kind of like Harry Potter Harry Potter's wand shop oh yeah. they find that yes, piece sir. that speaks to them and then they want to take it home and that's what they name and and use for many years and then a lot of good bongs go to heaven yeah you know? You know, so they got to come back it's a little bit of job security there the beauty is True. in the fridge of the glass right um, so part of it is you know should I keep it on the counter you know and there's that one chick that comes over that one night you want to impress her and <laughs> boom the dog knocks it over with oh, the tail bro, yeah you know? it's over. so come it's on over. back to new Wu and get your brand new piece 1000% actually speaking of pieces can you explain this piece how did you guys come up with this concept great so this is like uh, what I do on all of my pieces is I fume them with this precious metal this is 0.999 silver it's like a mirror without a background when you uh, take the black background from the mirror, you can kind of see through it. That's what's going on here. And then after we've colored it with a little bit of resin or smoke, it appears to change colors, blues and yellows and different things like this. And it's a light version of it. And as we get more and more complex with the piece, uh, the fuming and different details get more and more complex. For sure. This is one of the higher end pieces called a limited edition. It's because I, I just don't make much of them. We have a small staff over here. We're working out of Vegas. We're making what we can. Right. And um, it's on a 50 millimeter tubing with a five mil thick. This is the big boy. This is what a lot of the, the, the younger guys fill up with the, all the smoke and, yes, and, and rip on hard. They get all crazy. And, and make sure you see some squiggles. Right. <laughs> uh, the piece that I go through the New Wu Tasting Lounge is what I call my cakey. Uh, yes, I've branded sir. it with you guys with the New Woo logos up front. We've worked closely with Ethan from New Woo, just making sure everything looks right aesthetically, making sure everything fits in the cases. We got the killer neon sign in here, and we're pu pushing yes, it hard. But that particular piece is the one that I really enjoy hitting out of Same. and doing that technique that I showed earlier, which is don't fully grind up your weed. I don't recommend a grinder for a, a, a bong hit, but a lot of people like it. It's yeah. kind of a, a flavor thing. For sure. Um, and so uh, when you pack it up, uh, you put a little bit of the bigger pieces on the bottom, so it kind of stuffs it. Yeah. Uh, it's so got it most of them have it. a three to four millimeter bowl hole. That's what we're striving for perfection. I don't recommend using a screen. And I roast the hit. You might need to do two or three to find out how much matter you're going to put in there. And I roast the hit and snap it through. The ashes end up in the water. Right. Then yeah. I pull the, the, the carb with one shot and get it all with one shot. Beautiful. That for me is a perfect hit. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people want to fill it up, and take a breath and all this stuff. That's, and for I'm me, guilty. it's time in the chamber um, that, that changes the, the, the taste or I don't know what kind of name we're going to wrap around a carboxylation shit in here but right. it's going to change the flavor in there you know what i noticed doesn't do that is if i use a vaporizer oh, I see. Um, a lot of other things that we can do in the tasting room here uh, one of the future plans is going to be to have little seminars in here and we can fill this up with fresh herbs uh, whether it's thyme, mint, uh, different savories, sweets, things like this. We can couple that with our drinks we're serving. Uh, we can smoke through that with an orange flavor or an OG Kush or even some, 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 some darker sativas and things like this, some Durbans. And we can kind of find some cool flavor profiles. For sure. When we do that, we can have fun, you know, fun marking down what our thoughts are. And our, we can collect data and kind of go out and do some cool flavor pairings and things like that with, with these shafts and additions in you can also take these out of the out of the out of a freezer so they're nice and cold we can add ice into them yeah and just have I fun with ice. it try some different stuff for sure that's the fun part of using the box and, and trying to be a little creative around it for sure we'll give it a break all right um so I appreciate all that information too. Now I'm still baby in the in the industry, so man, you are putting me on game. Cool. Uh, how did you get started using cannabis? 
So, how did I get started using cannabis? You know, I was at a young age, for some reason, drawn to either drying a banana peel out and smoking it, or, um, you know, I heard these stories and stuff of, of, of things that you smoke. Why? I'm not sure. Maybe it was coming from my DNA. Um, but as I grew and discovered the plant a little bit and different flavor profiles or really what was going on with it, um, it was just, you know, kind of, kind of my, I feel like my natural, you know, upbringing. Right. I, don't th I don't think it's for everyone. Yeah, I think some sure. people react differently to it, same as alcohol or any other drugs or intoxicants that you're doing. Uh, it's, if it's right for you, great. If it's not, I don't recommend it. I recommend putting it on as a salve. You can try it in different things like that or CBDs. Um, I do believe it's a plant that heals. For sure. um, I think that in the same sense, that uh, let's say as I grow and I'm and I'm I'm navigating life, right? Okay, I'm navigating life, and sometimes it's painful. Yeah, for sure. It's not easy. No. When I have a, a painful joint, I take and I rub a, 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 a thing on it that makes it numb or, or helps it out. I right. think that cannabis does a little bit this for the brain in a natural way. It's a plant we can grow in the backyard. It happens so quickly. Only God could have done this. It's only a natural thing. I, I can't see it any other way. Right. Same way as when the Fair fruit uh, ferments and you drink it and get drunk. Yeah. Uh, I think that there's something more deeper spirituality to it. I think that you know history represents whatever we can read. Right. Prehistory, there's an unwritten. Uh, I think there's there's some images, some things we can see from prehistory that definitely represent cannabis. We can dig up coffins in Egypt and find cannabis and things like this. Yeah. There's gotta be something more to this. Time. What yeah. it is, I don't know. Right. I'm having an incredible experience in this incarnation, bringing these pieces to people. And I think that this is part of a, a spiritual element. I think it's a part of a, a, a ritual that people like to do. They keep it clean, they wipe it out, right. they pack the thing, they do the thing. And it's part of this, this ritual that people do. Um, and it is an ingestion and a disposal of, of, of ideas. Right. So now all of a sudden, oh, I, you know, I forgot, I gotta do this or whatever, and you can get your lists together. If you can handle it, right. great. Right. If it dumbs you down and you can't handle it and you need it for some sleep uh, uh, help, Parameters. great. You know what I mean? You need to find that in, in and of yourself. And so for, sure. for me, that's how I got started cannabis and that was my, my path to get to where I'm at today. And again, it was only, me making these vessels right. that got me into doors in the early 90s that were the biggest weed dealers in the US. For sure. They had to have the pipe. For sure. And so they flew me to the house or showed right. me the, the crop. And I, you know, and I, you know, that's just where I was going with it. I went, to all, I went backstage with Snoop, exhibit uh, in the hotel. Uh, you know, Dang. everybody, uh, George Clooney got a bong, Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore. And it was Dang. this vessel to get high, this kind of, you know, cool, Object, I, I, it's hard. It's hard to describe. I, I, I also think that sometimes it works in different negotiations better than currency. Yeah, you give the guy a long, and and it, and it brings you, you into something? the into the door. Right, you know I mean? one thousand percent. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a great talking point yeah. too. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. What is your uh, preferred method of consumption? Well, sometimes it just depends, you know, on the time of the day. Um, I don't like to overload myself. I don't like to overload my lungs. For sure. Um, so I'll smoke bong hits sometimes at night um, after work. Beautiful. Um, and then during the day, maybe I'll smoke some, a couple of spliffs. I got you. Um, and uh, that's pro pretty much where I go with the day. I, 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 I just kind of, um, I have an incredible bong collection. Uh, but I use one little one, like I said, like this, and that's my kind of my preferred method. For uh, sure. My my girl uh, does a cool crochet cozy on them and cozies right. for the lighters, and it's all homey, hey, that's and cool. that's the home that's bomb, cool. man. That's what's up, man. Yeah. That's yeah. what's up. Uh, do you any wax during the day? Um, rarely am I smoking yeah. wax during the day. Uh, it's it's More kind of, of for me. Day. Yeah, it's like it's like doing shots. Right. Gotcha. Um, you know, and, and and so I have to kind of gauge it and make sure I pace myself. For I gotta sure. be on point during the days right yeah. now. I got a lot going on. Yeah, one thousand percent. One thousand percent. Let's see. What's your favorite strain and why? So yeah, favorite strain. So. Uh, it, it, my, my, my favorite strain right now is going to have to be uh, one of the pure tangies that's out there. I love um, and so I, I definitely, 
you know, navigate or, or, or I'm guided by uh, the haze varieties. For sure. Uh, anything in those deep hazes, back from Neville's haze. Um, if I had to pick something out of there, it would be a Northern Lights haze. Gotcha. Uh, some kind of mix like that. Damn, that sounds amazing. I'm just really into the OG Rootsy strains. For sure. Um, especially those, those bald cat strains, those ones that are just so far out. They're so different uh, that when you're smoking them in a room full of fucking dreadlocks and weed smokers and people, everybody else that's smoking will turn and ask for sure, what is he smoking? Hell yeah. You know what I mean? And I believe it's those old hazes, those sideways tangies that are happening, some of Adam Dunn's strains, uh, the, the old THC stuff, and um, you know, just, just really core Levi's denim strains. Right. There's been a lot of breeding, a lot of mixing, a lot, a lot of, of moving mixing, down the man, line, a lot of mo moving towards numbers on THC scales or package numbers, right. uh, which I'm, I'm a fan of. I don't right. think anything's wrong with any way direction we're going right now. For sure. Um, but the guys Still that, I'm, that I'm working with right now are the, the, the DNA genetics guys, Crockett gotcha. Seeds, those guys, uh, AJ Diesel, uh, hey. he's a good friend of mine, uh, and uh, Ben Brown from uh, IC Collective. Okay. And our, our main people up in California are, that are doing the resins is called Earl Hill. And they're out of Humboldt Fire Mountain Farms, Man, they're and they're using happen. all those DNA genetics, which all kind of have that tangy flair to them, whether right. it's a strawberry or banana or this or that. And so for, for me, that fresh, live frozen, that, that fresh frozen live resin, uh, that's for me, if I'm gonna smoke waxes and, and shatters and things like that right at the moment, that's what I really enjoy, and I enjoy it at a super low temperature. Gotcha. Where I'm yep. barely Same. getting 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 a hit, but I'm getting a full flavor full out of it. Full flavor. You know, oh, some people term. might equate yeah. it to just sniffing wine. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, but sure. but 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 for me, if I'm gonna really enjoy it, you know, I, I take a full reef out of just the sn smell of it, and then I'll I'll hit it and I'll hit it at a super low low temperature, and I'll do a cold start on these things. Yeah, I love cold starts, man. That's, yep. that's honestly the only way to go. Uh -huh. Honestly. Um, let's see, who are some of your biggest inspirations and heroes in the cannabis industry? Right, so, um, you know, the cannabis industry is made up of a lot of people right now. It's so fast moving and so noisy. Uh, you don't want to get caught up in all that. Sure. Uh, some of the grows that I just mentioned are some of some of the people that I work with are, are the troopers. Those guys are the front lines of really what's going on. Uh, especially when you get up to Humboldt County into the Earl Hill guys, people growing good chronic weed up there are still shitting in outhouses. They're still living like 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 troopers out there and, right. and growing that cannabis for us. Right. Uh, you know, here in, in Nevada it's a little bit different. Yeah, you have you sure. have a vertical integration with everybody. Everybody's got a lot of money. Out there in California, those guys are the guys that kind of kind of troopered it out for us. So a lot of those guys in the hills, there's way too many to mention. But way in terms of industry at leaders, gotcha. at the moment, um, there's 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 three people that that are that are kind of top of the game in my opinion. And one is Mitch Barukowitz with Merida Capital. Right. And uh, and Mitch has done a lot of really progressive things on a national, global level in cannabis in terms of having the, the balls and the belief to finance uh, uh, companies or, or bring companies forward that that have been uh, that have had had good reputations, clout, and then became successful. There are over 75 assets in cannabis right now. Mitch Brookwitz, Merida Capital, one of them. Uh, gotcha. Another one, his name is Ross Haley, Ross and Haley. he started uh, General Hydroponics, oh, which was okay. one of the picks and shovel uh, 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 people of this whole industry. It's selling in lights, uh, hydro trays to the people. You know, it started out, you know, a small guy in California, ended up uh, moving it so big. I think Scott's Miracle Grow uh, are those kind of those people have that uh, that place now, right. and uh, and and so uh, the third one that I, that I want to mention is Jair Veldman. And he started Gavita Lights. Okay. Uh, he's out of Holland and has vast connections in the industry through the lighting, uh, some of the best cannabis lighting in the industry. Uh, and now he's, uh, in my opinion, one of the titans of what we do. And for wow. us, as as kind of you know, forward moving people in the industry, people that want to be uh, uh, helpful and want to be respectful to the plant, uh, those guys are guys to look up to. Uh, to kind of see a couple different places where you can yeah, be in sure. the industry yeah. uh, besides just the out. dispensary grow part of this whole thing. Yeah. There's so much here uh, and so much to take advantage of and, and to become an expert isn't to go you know, take a class from someone and, and, and figure it out uh, you know, like that. It's to kind of go 
get entrenched in what that is that you want to do. And I believe there's a lot of space for that right now. For sure. Uh, so if you know, we, we used to in glass blowing, when you want to learn the, the uh, from the master, you sweep the floor at first. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. Sure. If it's starting out as a bud tender, starting out as a door guy, yes, work your way up, and you and you and you learn, you learn where you kind of want to be, and then you kind of want to navigate a path there. We're in yeah. a brand new space. It's not legal yet. Right. Exactly. So with us that's getting to that point, all of a sudden, now we're going to have a little bit of uh, of say in what's going on because we know the street game part of the game, and we're going to be able to incorporate it all. One thousand percent. We're literally building our own avenues in this. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, we're gonna jump into our last segment now. Um, it's called Off the Rip. It's just a quick little A and B questionnaire. We're gonna ask you and see um, what is your like, whether you like A or B. Uh, let's start with, uh, I believe I got five for you. Got so it. with A being, which do you prefer better? The Las Vegas Strip or Fremont Street? Fremont. Fremont Street. Indicas or Sativas? Sativas. Sativa dog. Yes, sir. That's two out of two. Um, let's see. Um, Fiji or J Boog? J Boog. J Boog? J Bay? J Boog. J Boog. J Boog all the way. J Boog all the way. Okay. J Boog all the way, <laughs> He knows his island reggae. I see you. I see J Boog, Al Fresco. I know you all out there, man. You guys are the fucking team, <laughs> the posse for sure. Yes, sir. Um, let's see. Uh, spliffs or dabs? Because I know you love long bones. Spliffs. spliffs. Gotcha. All right, and then last. Um, honestly, that was my last one, but we'll, we'll do one right off the bat. Uh, Oregon or Maui? Tough. Stuck, tough, man. Stuck, tough. stuck, stuck. Best of both worlds there, you know what I mean? <laughs> Lots of butterflies and rainbows in both places. 1,000%. That's for sure. Yeah. I, th I think in terms of the weed, too, Maui weed has this island style of yes, resin sir. on it. It's it's huge resin balls that survive huge, that rains, bro. rains, and the wind and everything else. Uh, over in Oregon, uh, it's, it's a little bit more crisp. High elevation, especially Bend, Oregon, sure. uh, you get some of the most chronic indoor in the world because of the freezing cold nights uh, and the sense. warm days and, and, and what goes on over there. And so I think that, that it has some of the best of both worlds in all aspects. Yeah, yeah, brother. Well, Jason, I appreciate you for coming on the new sessions again, brother. It was, it's been an honor and a pleasure. I hope to have you on again. Right um, on, Is man. there anything that you... Anytime, man, anytime. Anything you want to tell our guests at home or where they can find you social media wise? Yeah, just follow us on Instagram, Jerome underscore Baker. I think here on YouTube too, we have a, a YouTube channel. And like I mentioned, it has a lot of the live glass blowing videos. We do a lot of projects down here at the New Wu Tasting Room. Make sure you stop by down here, check out the bongs. Here's the greatest place to come buy them. Uh, they got a great display over here, and yeah, super stoked to be part of the team, man. Yes, sir. Aloha. Aloha. Hey, come check out Mark Connects. Right on. We out. Appreciate it. What's going on, guys? Come on in. How's it going guys? I'm Justin Bloom with Exhale Brands Nevada. I'm the director of production over here. We're super excited about our, our live resin Jerome Baker concentrate line that's about to be coming into to the market here. We got three different strains. You got your Baker cake, you have your Lisa lemons, which is a super terpy batter as you can see right here. The consistency is just super on point as far as terpenes and consistency wise. And then you also have your blueberry muffins, which is gonna be another live resin batter which is super, super fire and gonna be the consistency that you're looking for in a batter.
We've got three different strains that are gonna be coming online and probably more to come after that. All this is going to be available at Nuwu. Please find it at, at your nearest Nuwu near you.